Hi, I'm Professor Mohammed Omar, and today we're going to talk about Putnam 2019 number A1. Before getting into the solution to this problem, I want to make a comment about it. So typically on the Putnam, A1 is a problem you can kind of sink your teeth into, and if you make your way toward a solution, the solution write-up is typically short. Um, this one is, this A1 in my opinion was an exception. Um, there are multiple steps and it requires a factorization that isn't standard. Uh, so I want to talk about the solution to this to give us more insight on these interesting factoring techniques because maybe we can use them outside of the context of this problem. Okay, so the problem states determine all possible values of the expression a cubed plus b cubed plus c cubed minus 3abc over all non-negative integers a, b, and c. Say what? Okay, so the first observation I want to make is that this expression actually factors. Uh, so you might pretend to factor it as a plus b plus c times a squared plus b squared plus c squared. But if you do that, then you run into a bit of a problem because there are these cross terms like a squared c and b squared a, etc., that need to be dealt with. But you can augment this factor in order to deal with those. So for example, um, you have a squared b here, and you could multiply this a by a negative a b in order to adjust for that. Okay, um, and then by the symmetry of the variables, we can subtract the products of all the variables. And now by doing that, we get rid of all of these cross terms, except we introduce three new terms, a times negative bc, b times negative ac, and c times negative ab. All of these are negative abc, and so we get exactly this expression here, um, negative 3abc as a leftover. So, this product is exactly this expression right here. I'll talk in another video about how to factor polynomials that look like this in the sense that every single uh, monomial that you see in this expression has the same degree, here degree 3. You can do this by reducing the number of variables by 1 and factoring downstairs, um, but we'll save that for another video. Okay, um, so now we have this nice factored form. I'm going to actually do something kind of sly with it. Um, so if you notice, you have an a squared, b squared, and a negative abc, oh sorry, a negative ab, which is very close to a perfect square, a minus b all squared, except we need two copies of this, not one. Um, so we can force two copies of this by multiplying this by two. And by symmetry, we ought to do the same thing with everything here. Um, but we can't just like randomly multiply this by 2. We need to multiply these by 2 and multiply by a half in order to keep the same expression. Okay, and now we have an a squared, a b squared, and a negative 2ab to make a minus b squared. And we actually have enough a squared of a squared, b squared, and c squared to uh, factor this into a sum of squares. So for example, we used a squared with this negative 2ab to make one of these perfect squares, and then the other a squared we can combine with one of the c squares and negative 2ac to make a minus c squared. So we can rewrite this expression as 1 half a plus b plus c times a minus b squared plus a minus c squared plus b minus c squared. Okay, so now in this factored form, we can actually uh, take a look at this and make an observation. So a, b, and c are non-negative integers, and this is a sum of squares of integers, so it is non-negative as well. So we get for free that this expression that we're interested in has to be non-negative no matter what a, b, and c are. Uh, let's give this expression a variable name. Let's call it uh, maybe E for expression. Okay, so E has to be non-negative. We could have actually figured that out in a different way. If you happen to know the arithmetic geometric mean inequality, that's a way to uh, ex show that the sum of these things divided by 3 has to be at least ABC, and so E is non-negative. But 
Here's another way to see that this expression E has to be non-negative. One of the advantages though of this expression is now if we make A minus B, A minus C, and B minus C small, small integers that we know, and divide by this half, we can get an expression for uh, E that will illuminate what possible values E can take on. So let's do that by actually picking concrete values. Let's let A be X, B be X, and C be X plus one, where X is a random non-negative integer. Okay, so if we do that, then this here is zero, this is one, and this is one. And so this entire expression is two. Divided by this two is one. And here we'll have the sum of these values, which is three X plus one. So if we let X range over all possible non-negative integers, we get all non-negative integers that leave a remainder of one when divided by three. Cool. Now we did this by making two of these variables the same and one, one different than those two. We can do the same thing by setting A to be X, B to be X plus one, and C to be X plus one. And by the same argument, that gives us that E is three X plus two. And so we get all non-negative integers that leave a remainder of two when divided by three. Okay, so now the only things that we haven't figured out how to get it, uh, in, as expressions for E are multiples of three. We'll do the same thing again with integers that are close to each other. We'll let A be X minus one, B be X and C be X plus one. Right, now if we do that, this expression here is the sum of these, which is three X. And here we'll have one, one squared, two squared, and one squared, which is six. Divide these two, you get three. So we'll have three times three X, which is nine X. Okay, so we see from this that we get all, we can get all non-negative integers that are not multiples of three, and then we can get all non-negative integers that are multiples of nine. We have to be careful though, x can't be zero here, um, because that would make a, a negative number, but we can get zero by setting a, b, and c to be zero. So we do get all multiples of nine. Okay, so the thing left to figure out is what happens with multiples of three that are not multiples of nine. And what we'll show in fact, is if this expression E is a multiple of three, then it's forced to be a multiple of nine. And so all we get is these numbers right here, things that are not multiples of three and uh, multiples of nine. Okay, so let's see how this goes. So suppose three divided the expression E. I'm gonna use this expression here for E to figure out what to do. Um, so if three divides E, then three has to divide one of these two factors right here. And I'm gonna make an observation about a relationship with these two factors. So if you take the quantity A plus B plus C and you square it, you get A squared plus B squared plus C squared plus two AB plus two AC plus 2bc, which is this expression right here, a squared plus b squared plus c squared minus ab minus ac minus bc plus three times the sum of the pairs of products. I'm not gonna write that down, but it's three times something. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that if you look at this expression right here, three divides this number, if and only if three divides this, because these two differ by a multiple of three. Okay, 
But 3 divides the square of a number if and only if 3 divides that actual number, because 3 is a prime. So we have 3 divides the quantity a plus b plus c if and only if 3 divides this expression right here. Um, so what does that mean about e? It means if 3 divides e, then 3 has to divide either this or this. But if 3 divides one of these, by this argument, it divides the other. And so 9 must divide e. So in conclusion, if 3 divides e, then 9 is forced to divide e. And so that tells us the multiples of 3 that we can get as an output for e must be multiples of 9. Cool. So that pretty much sums up the numbers that we can get. We proved we can get everything that's not a multiple of 3, and then if you get a multiple of 3, it must be a multiple of 9, and then we can actually get multiples of 9. So I think the moral of the story with this problem really is learning these interesting factoring techniques that are not necessarily standard, um, but could be used in other contexts as well. So I hope you liked today's video. If you do, please click the like button. And if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel.